Hi, this is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who are here in Pakistan, and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So let's go. So today we're meeting with Behlul Chatinkaya, the Pakistan correspondent of Anadolu Agency, and he should be waiting for us somewhere here. So let's go find him. Hi, Bello. Uh, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, such a nice place here. Huh? Yeah, this is a nice place, especially in the hot times. Yeah, although now there's like literally no wind. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. so Always hot. Always shade. Yeah. So how long have you been in Pakistan now? Now it's over one and a half year now. Mm -hmm. And since 2018, April, I've okay. been here. And now everything is going good for a one and a half year because people were saying me that you will go to Islamabad, you'll go to Pakistan, then you're a little shocked. Okay. After a while, you'll get used to it. Right. When you leave that place, then you'll miss it. Hmm. So I'm in that process now. Okay. I, I haven't left for yeah. now, but <laughs> I'll see when I leave the place. Yeah. I left, of course, for short vacations, mm, but not course. for a long time. Yeah. I'll see it later. Hmm. So what did you think about Pakistan before you came here? Yeah, I actually first in, learned that I was coming to Pakistan when I was in England. I, okay. I was working in uh, London and yeah, uh, yeah. studying in London. Hmm. I was told that I was going to Afghanistan, Pakistan or India, one of them. All right. I told that to my mother that I was, I'm going to one of these three countries. She told me that go to Pakistan because, okay. <laughs> because it is better countries among these three countries. All right. It's better country and cleaner and obviously a Muslim country. Mm. And uh, you know, in Turkey, we have lots of things about Pakistan. We know very much about Pakistan oh, really? because of the yeah, you know, the history things mm, between yeah, the yeah. Turkey and Pakistan. It's very uh, long history, and okay. we have very friendly history. Okay. So my mother told me that go to Pakistan. So uh, after like couple months later, they told me that I'm going to Pakistan. Yeah. And because they told me Afghanistan and India yeah. to make the um, Pakistan journey easier and. Um, they just want me to like to go to Pakistan. Okay, I see. So yeah, after uh, England, coming to Pakistan is very dramatic change. Yeah, it is. In a li lifestyle. Mm. But uh, for us as a Turkish and as a Muslim, it's not difficult to live in a Muslim country. It, Especially exactly. Pakistan is a great country to live for a Turkish people. Yeah. So I'm happy with, with the Pakistan here. And uh, before that, before I was told that I was coming to Pakistan, I had not too much uh, feelings about Pakistan, mm. but after I learned that, I start researching, I start reading, and I found lots of common things, mm. like so many, like thousands common words. Now, I, when I hear Urdu, I can pick some words and I understand them. Yeah, exactly. Because there are lots of common words, mm. like the culture is similar, and people's behavior or people's feelings to us, to Turkish people, is great. You don't feel like you're in some other country. That's amazing. So tell me a little bit about when you first landed in Islamabad. What went through your mind? Like, what, what was your yeah. first impression? My first impression when I came to Pakistan, I came to the old airport, yeah. old Islamabad airport. My first uh, impression was this queue will never end. <laughs> there was, there was so a long people. queue in the passport. Uh, and it is like um, Pakistanis, foreigners. I'm going to foreigners, but foreigners going to Pakistani queue. Right, it's so confusing. I was, go I was going to Pakistani queue, this queue is ending, and they're saying, you're a foreigner, go to the other queue. <laughs> other queue is too long, you're going there. And they are saying, okay, come this one. It took very long time wow. to pass that gate. April, it was a nice weather in that time. It wasn't yeah, so hot. Exactly. And the, do you know the tree, linden? The linden is oh, a yeah, yeah, tree yeah. that of we, we, yeah. we drink its tea. Okay. Yeah, we collect the leaves yeah. and boil them and drink it. Okay. When I came to, I was staying in, the, in an hotel in F8. Mm -hmm. The streets were smelling like linden. Wow. I was saying, okay, let's find something. Yeah. and drink it. But <laughs> no one knew that th this thing was something to drink. 
<laughs> and yeah, it, and it was a green place. And the other thing was, I was walking in the night mm. in the streets, like everywhere is green, yeah. no one in the street. It's little dark, like the because of the trees are covering the street lights. Exactly. I was thinking, what if there is a dog here? What if there is a <laughs> wild animal here? But there wasn't. Exactly. It was very really safe to walk. Yeah. And smells good. Seen good. It was so good in the first weeks when I came here. Yeah. I didn't feel any like uh, it's a foreign country. Wow. What I'm going to do here? I didn't feel any moment of this. That's amazing. And this is one of your favorite places in Islamabad, Trail y Five. Yes, because I say Islamabad is very hot. Yeah. I can say Islamabad has the best winter I have ever seen. Really? But not the best summer yeah, <laughs> because that's it's so true. hot. Yeah. <laughs> After like um, seven, eight o'clock in the evening, you can go out, but in daytime, it's so hot. Right. But this place is always cool. Yeah. You don't feel like hot, you sweat, it's okay. Yeah. But you <laughs> don't <fine>. feel hot. <laughs> you can rest here. When you stop here, the breeze comes, you feel cool, then it's a good place. Also, this is a, a the pe where people come to socialize here. Exactly, they, yeah. The Pakistan or Islamabad people come here to socialize, to walk. You can observe the culture and the people here. Mm, it's very interesting. Yes. And, and I like, like, you know, sometimes you, you see more and more women coming here yes. also. Like, it's, I, I feel pretty safe here as yes. well. Like yes, yes, yes. Trails. Also, um, I studied um, sociology, sociology on mm. the, um, urban cultures. Okay. So. In, especially in the Western countries, mm. you can say that this person is rich, this person isn't, this yeah. person is educated, this person isn't. But in Islamabad and in this place, you see people wearing same kind of clothes, having the same of, same kind of hairstyle, yeah. women also. Mm. You see the woman here wearing shalwar kameez. Yeah. Uh, you see the similar people other places too. And there is no like difference here. Exactly. I, I can see that yeah. in this place because it's uh, one of the most crowded places yeah. of Islamabad, these trails. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Should we take a little hike yeah, then? Let's go. Let's go. But yeah, so you said most Turkish people know quite a lot about mm -hmm. Pakistan, but what do you think they think about the country? Because often in the West, people like have all these negative stereotypes about the country. Is it the same in Turkey? Uh, the, the feeling of Turkish people and what pe Turkish people think is, the Western, con Western media or Western countries, if they think something bad about us, mm. like, I'm telling them Muslim countries or the countries in the East, Yeah. If they think something bad about us, it's not because of us. Because okay. what they made us, or what they want to show us, is creating this idea in the West. Okay. So, in Turkey, if you say people in Pakistan are like this, hmm. they would not, they would not believe, believe you. Okay. They, they will just think that probably they did this, but you cannot generalize this. Exactly. One, yeah. one person might do some bad things, hmm. but no one thinks that all the Pakistan is like this. Of course, there are like problems in every country, not only in, Turkey, not only in Pakistan or even in England, hmm. even in the United States, there are too much problems. And uh, But these things, uh, we don't generalize in Turkey. So about yeah. Pakistan, we don't generalize it. So of course, people might need help, they might need um, like economical aids, mm. but uh, this isn't. These people in Pakistan don't want to live in these conditions. Yeah. Some countries or some political ideas made this country or made these people live in these conditions. Mm. So we believe that people in Pakistan, they are good, they are nice people, they are helpful, hospitable, but just the political environment make them look, or made them look like this yeah. in the West. Okay, that's very interesting because yeah. I've sometimes met people like from Iran even and they're like, oh my God, Pakistan, that's so dangerous. So yeah. there's none of that in it's, Turkey. Yeah, I, I, when, yeah, Turkish people sometimes they ask me, is Pakistan dangerous? Yeah. I say to them, the only danger in Pakistan is you can crash to a pig in the street. <laughs> this is the only danger. That's true. I've been here. I didn't see any uh, like uh, terror attacks or yeah. n 
Of course, you can hear that things like happening thousand kilometers away. Mm, yeah. So people say it's Pakistan. Like it's not it's here. Like thousand, yeah. yeah, not thousand where kilometers we live. away. Yeah. And uh, other things like burglary yeah. or like pickpocketing. I didn't see, I didn't experience these things so far in Pakistan. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's very nice. And was there like anything that really surprised you about the country when you came here? Like anything unexpected? Yeah, and it, the most unexpected thing was people know too much about Turkey. Yeah. And people really respect Turkey, Turkish people, hmm. Turkish politicians. You know, we have now um, President Erdogan. Yeah. But before him, there was different people, different political backgrounds, but they have same respect to each person hmm. since the founding of Turkish Republic, 1923 till here. Yeah. And uh, people know like many cities, especially they know Konya. Konya oh, is yeah, the city of, of the yeah, Rumi. Mevlana Rumi. Yeah. Yeah. And they know very much about him. Uh, and other things like uh, founder of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Hmm. Even in Pakistan, no one watches football, but everybody knows Turkish football teams. Oh, really? And Turkish huh. football players. That's so Because nice. uh, it is kind of like their football team is competing the other uh, oh, other teams. Oh, wow. Yeah. They, also, so that, yeah. that was really unexpected for you? Yes, them. yes. I was, because I, I wasn't in uh, Pakistan before I appointed here, yeah. but I was in Bangladesh. Oh, in the okay. streets, I see people playing cricket, like uh, everybody's talking about cricket. Huh. Their role models are uh, cricket players. Exactly. And they don't have any like success in the football. You, yeah. Even like in the Asian Cup. Asian Cup is the, the tournament of all Asian countries. Yeah. And just for them. But they, are, they don't have any name in this tournaments. But they know too much about Turkish football. Yeah, wow. it, it was really interesting to me. Yes, that's so funny. So wow. So you were were you working in Bangladesh as a journalist as well? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was there for just short time, like two weeks for uh, okay. the uh, Arakan refugee uh, oh, things. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was in the border, Myanmar and Bangladesh border. Oh, that's so interesting. And yeah. where else? Like you mentioned, you were in the UK. That's where you studied, yeah, right? Yeah, I I lived in UK two and a half year, a little over two and a half year. Okay. Uh, I studied there, masters, and I worked there as a journalist too mm -hmm. then apart from that for a short time like going and coming back for a short time things I've been to Somalia wow. like um, Egypt okay. in the first revolution I was yeah, there yeah, yeah. and Tunisia after the revolution I was there wow. um, like neighboring countries of Turkey like um, mm. Greece or uh, Balkan countries wow. like I can say about like 20 countries that's I visited amazing. as a journalist. And all while being employed by the Anadolu Agency, right? Yeah. Or other yeah, I, Actually, um, oh. this is my second or little over than two years in okay. Anadolu Agency. All right. But uh, before that, I started journalism in the, the last day of 2010, 31st oh, okay. December, yeah. Okay. Uh, in a professional company. Yeah, before yeah. that, I was doing uh, works as a student, a journalism oh, student, I because okay. I studied journalism in Turkey. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this time I was um, working in some small companies, websites as a like freelancer. Hmm. But then in 2010, I started Turkish newspaper Yeni Shafak. You can oh, translate okay. it to like uh, New Dawn. There's, oh, right. there's Dawn here and New Dawn is in Turkey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I worked there for four years. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, I went to England, I started to Anadolu, then mm. I'm here now. Okay, great. Yeah, it's so pretty here though, huh? Yeah, it's like, this part's always seen like, there's always some animals. Oh, okay. Jump on you I think there might you, be monkeys here, drag actually. Drag you into the forest. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, I wouldn't come here when it's dark. If you come here in summer, mm. just walk in this water. Yeah, this is really nice. Huh? Your feet get paralyzed. You, okay, it's so you cold. You lose all the sense. <laughs> yeah, so cold. Yeah, wow, look at this. That is... Be careful. Yeah, this is <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> Thank God it hasn't rained in a while. Wow. Well, I, I really miss the rain. Yeah, now the monsoon the season weather. has yeah. kind of um, <laughs> yeah, cool finished. Weather. Um, but yeah, so have you made a lot of Pakistani friends here? Yeah, I, in first months, I wasn't going out too much. Yeah. But when I started going out, I started meeting like the people like mostly in the culture environment. Okay. They're doing like uh, 
like music, uh, art, theater. Mm. These people I started meeting. Afterwards, like a couple months later, the election came. Right. Then I started meeting the people in the political environment. Of course, yeah. And all ended, no friendship remind, remind. So right. yeah, I see them, I meet them all sometimes. They come to our office. Uh, the mainly the journalist friends yeah, come yeah, in our yeah. office Very cool. and uh, the, these guys in the cultural environment they uh, invite me to their shows like the, if they do live music in somewhere or if they oh, do like cool. uh, theater plays they uh, invite me these kind of places hmm. and the people in the political environment they uh, really want to promote their uh, ideas yeah so we meet them we speak some other things, daily things. Then yeah. In small part, we speak about the politics, politics of Pakistan or yeah. politics in the region. And especially, like slowly, slowly, I'm having like uh, foreign journalist friends, mm. like you, <laughs> and uh, other uh, friends, because most of us come here alone. Like exactly, uh, they we might don't be know anyone. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm engaged, but mm. uh, yeah. my girlfriend is in Turkey now. Yeah, and. Um, some friends they come here alone they don't yeah. bring their wives or husbands exactly. or families mm. back there so we all need some friends exactly. some people to speak about yeah so we are like meeting sometimes talking on like like whatsapp or yeah. meeting out so like the, these are the, my, my friends but the pakistani friends and the foreign friends are like on balance yeah like okay, 50 that's 50. Good. Yeah. yeah awesome let me just try this water you yeah, mentioned it's so cold cool yeah exactly it is quite cool huh yeah and yeah, very I, even, I even tried drinking this water you did yeah <laughs> <laughs> because i don't know what's happening on the up there yeah. so i just thought it might be clean it <laughs> might it yeah. might not the taste taste was <laughs> no, good it taste fine. was good but don't try well, it, i guys. won't <laughs> but yeah i think we should start heading back soon yeah yeah before it gets dark yeah let's go yeah. time to take a short break see you in a bit Welcome back. We're here with Behalul Chetinkaya from the Anadolu Agency. So, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a cool place. I've never been here before. Yeah, so there's a good breeze here. I know, finally, huh? Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I actually wanted to ask you a little bit more about Anadolu Agency. Like, okay. what's the story? It's an international yes, news agency the, based in Turkey. Yeah, it is the first news agency of Turkey, mm -hmm. established in uh, 1920. Oh, wow. Yeah, in the time of the um, independence war of Turkey, mm. uh, I can say like um, nine, ninety percent of Turkey were almost under the occupation of the foreign forces, mm. and there were only middle parts of Turkey independent in that time. And there was the uh, Liberation Army, yeah, and uh, they started the uh, independence war, but. Uh, the commander of the armies were Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. He was the f uh, first president and the founder of the republic. Yeah. He decided to establish a news agency to let the people know about the other parts of the Anad uh, Turkey. Okay. Anadolu is actually the the geographical name of Turkey. Oh, I see. This, okay. you know, Turkey is two parts: European side yeah, and the yeah, yeah. Asian side. Asian side is called Anadolu. The it, peninsula, yeah, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Anadolu is old Greek name. Mm. Uh, Anatolia means yeah, exactly. east yeah. in Greece, uh -huh. and it's the east of the Greece. Okay. And the European side is called Trace, mm. like the famous Trace. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, they give this name to the company and the this is very I really proud of this because of uh, the first founders of the Anadolu agency one woman and two uh, two three I think journalists one of them is woman the other two one mm. of them is a very famous novelist okay. and the other one journalist is from my city oh yeah <laughs> uh, which, which city is that it, it, it is called Mula Okay. It is southwest of Turkey, hmm. uh, near Izmir and Antalya. Okay, Maybe right. people heard uh, Marmaris or Bodrum. Yes, of course. These small towns. Very famous. Are, yeah, these towns yeah. are the towns of my city or, or my province. Mm. So this guy is from my city. 
Hmm. And now, as a person from that city, I work in that company. That's amazing. Yeah, in 1920, they established this news agency to let the people know about uh, what's going on in hmm. the uh, independent part or the liberated parts yeah. of the Turkey. And they, in the West, in that time, because we are fighting against France, England, uh, Italy, these hmm. countries, they have very uh, powerful um, media network, newspaper, journalist network. Hmm. So against them or like counter narrative okay. produce counter narrative because we were winning the battle mm. but in the west no one knew that so that's why this company first established during the uh, independence war it is the first company of turkish republic now even the parliament was opened like 20 days later okay. after the after wow. the news agency oh look at that yeah thank you very Just much got some chai and pakore pakore Excellent. Yeah, pakora. Pakora, pakora, pakore. Pakore names, yeah. is the <laughs> plural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you there so you much. Wow. Okay. And so now there's like offices all over the world, basically. Yes, yes. We, uh, we have uh, reporters in every country, I can say. Every single country. Yeah, almost mm. every country. Mm. And we have offices in 41 countries. Mm. Uh, but we have the network in yeah. each country I can say even each cities mm. we can find person to send us photographs videos yeah. like a stranger, uh, stories yeah. yeah yeah the freelancers okay. and uh, but like Islamabad it's kind of the center of the subcontinent okay. for my company huh. so we are covering stories from Islamabad about all the region like and Afghanistan. Yeah, we India. have reporters in Afghanistan, in okay. India, in other countries. Yeah. But Islam but is kind of the here. yeah center of the, yeah. this region. Also, there are like, uh, for example, Azerbaijan. It is the center of the all Turkic republics like oh, Kazakhstan, okay. Uzbekistan, yeah, Turkmenistan, yeah, yeah. and we have the cent uh, like the. How can I say? Like the headquarters of oh, that okay. region. Because that region, yeah. yeah. In I see. every department in my company is kind of like a separate company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, see. yeah, we are now here covering the whole subcontinent. Yeah, great. Of, for, especially Pakistan, of yeah. course. But, you know, things going on between Pakistan and India, Pakistan mm. and Afghanistan, Iran. Yeah. So, we cover all these stories too. And, and this office here was quite recently opened, right? Like, yes, it wasn't yes. here before. Yeah, it, actually, we, we were here before, mm. but the office officially opened in this year. But there, okay. there has been a reporter since, like, I can say 10 years back, 12 mm. years back. But we didn't have office. Yeah. When we uh, rent the office, it wasn't official okay. and we made the official opening oh it was official but the official opening ceremony uh, yeah, yeah we didn't do it because the bosses editors they yeah. have too much things to deal of with course, yeah, yeah <laughs> it took long time them to come here yeah so what makes pakistan such an important country for turkey then why why do you need to be here okay. as an agency the first uh, thing is this is one of the stable country in this region. Yeah. Pakistan is one of the stable countries. The other thing is there are too many people speaking English. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they speak English, they write in English, they can do anything in English. So we can find people to work for us, yeah. work with it's us. Very easy, yeah. Yeah. Also it is uh, like the one of the political centers of Absolutely, this region. Yeah. Like Islamabad, Delhi, Kabul. Mm. So we are trying to have at least one or two people in this kind of political centers in the region also pakistan has a huge influence in the muslim world of course it yeah. is like i can say uh, pakistan malaysia uh, saudi arabia turkey egypt yeah, these countries absolutely. had have very huge influence in muslim world mm. that's why these countries are important what yeah. they say is important for us yeah. no, that's also great. things going on here like like news yeah, there's so, so much happening. Yeah, all the even time. this country is not an important country. Mm. The things going on here are interesting they and are. news. They yeah. have like importance of the news. Yeah. So, um, what kind of stories do you cover here? Like, is it always mm. news, or do you get to do like feature stories? About, yeah. Like, what what do you do? Yeah, we do. Um, we divide it like uh, exclusive and routines. Okay. Routines are you have to do it. Yeah. You can't <laughs> escape. Like what Imran Khan said, where Imran Khan did go, or I don't know, like the uh, law, 
the parliament works. Yeah. These things are, you can't escape, you have to yeah. do it. Other things are like we do exclusives mainly about like human stories, okay. like tourism in Pakistan, because mm. uh, I've been to north of Pakistan, like Gilgit Baltistan, uh, Hunza, oh, wow. Skardu. I was even in uh, Siachen. I was the first, oh, uh, yeah, I was the first uh, foreign journalist in that place. I was there two weeks ago. Oh, how cool. Yeah, and uh, these places has really uh, touristic values. Mm. And, uh, but no one knew that mm. until I told the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, because uh, the Hunza, yeah. the culture, I can say very much similar to Turkey. Mm. The food they eat, the, really? the appearance of the people, their look, because uh, even they said they are Hunza Turks. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I, huh. I don't know if it's true or not. I mm. did some uh, readings about it, but uh, I couldn't find the answer if it's mm -hmm. real or not. Yeah, but at least that's what yeah, they think. Yeah, they think yeah. that. Mm. Uh, and in Skardu, it's like the paradise of mountaineers. Because yeah. like the, uh, there are like 20 uh, peaks in the world, over 8,000, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like five, six of them are in Skardu and Hunza. Mm. And this is that's the amazing. like mountaineers paradise. Yeah. And uh, if incredible. they do like marathons, like climbing each 8,000 mountains, Yeah. They have to come to Pakistan. Exactly. They have to go there. But if you are not mountaineers, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go there. Go there and watch the mountain. Yeah, exactly. And like the, you can, yeah, yeah, rivers, like food, the culture. Yeah. There are too many interesting things in Pakistan. Absolutely. And human stories, uh, like uh, people that achieved very huge success with the very like um, small chances. Mm. There are too many stories in Pakistan. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is, like, for example, Switzerland is very close to Turkey. Mm. You can go there in like two, three hours flight. Yeah. But Islamabad or Pakistan is like six, seven hours flight. Right. But coming to Pakistan, like, offers you much more things than going to Switzerland. Yeah. Because each mountain in Switzerland, there are like hotels, like resorts, mm. roads. But in Pakistan, some places are like, I can say, virgin. Yeah, nobody's been yeah, there, exactly. No one, no one, nobody's been there, no one touched. It is not easy to go, but it's a different joy to go these kind of places. I, I agree, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, we, we are dealing with mostly these things in exclusives. Mm, that's cool. And the other things are like, again, interviews yeah. in like politics or in like art, yeah, exactly. know, culture. Yeah. So, um, do you work with like an interpreter always, or have you learned more Urdu? Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> more than the yeah, little words. Yeah, in I was thinking that <laughs> learning Urdu is something difficult. Mm. And also, the other thing is, I was expecting to receive more respect if I don't speak Urdu. Oh, but I'm okay. seeing now. <laughs> If you speak Urdu huh? or if you like learn this, people show you respect more. Exactly. Because as a foreigner, if mm. you learn Urdu, also I said in the beginning that the learning Urdu isn't something difficult for a Turkish person. Yeah. Because you already like, know half the words. Too many words. <laughs> and, yeah. and then you just have to practice. I can say for a, for Turks that they can learn in like three months, mm. in like three, four hours lecture, or study yourself, whatever, three, four hours in a day, learning, it's enough for the learning Urdu. Yeah. For, for like, of course, not expert level. Yeah, <laughs> Beginner's but level. you'll get somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can at least survive in Pakistan yeah. with that uh, Urdu. Great. But um, I start to understand, I start to get what they say, what people are talking about. Mm. But uh, now I'm not able to speak. Yeah. But Maybe I always, of course, have interpreter. Yeah. But I said people speak English here. Yeah, exactly. It's so yeah, easy. It's a kind of <laughs> Anglophone country. Should we try some of these yeah. pakoras? Let's see. What is mm, this? Patti. So how's the chai? This is a good one. Mm. But I tasted the best one two weeks ago. Okay. I was in the Siachen Glacier. Uh, there, there was a small military post of Pakistan. Mm. They built uh, like huts or small houses um, 
made of the like stones or okay. igloos. They live mm. in igloos or stone houses. There was a small like a military post and the old houses in there were made of stones. Wow. But you can't stand up inside. You have to walk like this wow. because it's also like military building. Yeah. And a soldier were showing me the buildings where they sleep, where they eat, where they mm -hmm. pray. Mm -hmm. And they showed me the kitchen. Kitchen was like as big as this area. Mm -hmm. There were like five, six soldiers inside and a chef. They were making dutpati and um, what is that bread? Flat bread. Yeah, naan or roti. Yeah. No, 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 the other one. Anyway, I don't okay. remember the name. Chapati, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, they just gave me from that bread and that uh, dutpati. It was fresh milk mm. and freshly made wow. in there. It was the best dutpati so far I have tried in Pakistan. Wow. And I, when I back there, there were my other colleagues and other soldiers. I told them the dud patti in here is the best one. They said we made it out of markor milk. Markor? Markor? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that. Of course, there's no markor. They're making joke, but <laughs> they're, they're saying that we make it out of markor milk. But it was oh, the best so one. That's nice. Wow. Yeah, so, when it's fresh, it's great. Mm, so it really sounds like you've gotten to travel a lot through your work here. Like, have you been to all different provinces so far already? Yeah, I can say except Sindh and Baluchistan. Okay. Uh, I just couldn't have chance to go there. Yeah. But it's we are far. we are now uh, three colleagues in Islamabad. Mm. Just they went, I didn't. Okay. So I had the chance, but company said you go, you okay. stay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. But I visited. Uh, I went to Peshawar, but I couldn't have chance to visit all the city. All okay. right. But Lahore, I seen Lahore, mm. and. Um, Khan, Naran, Seyfil Maluk Lake, yeah, that's Balakot, amazing. yeah, and uh, all the way from Islamabad to Gilgit. I can say that that's most cool. like all the famous spots in Gilgit, Pakistan, I I was there. I visited them. Wow. Also, I have other. Um, I can say it's kind of my lifelong homework. Yeah. Uh, my city is very famous in Turkey, mm. and it's very famous in Europe. But people know the small parts. Imagine that you live in Islamabad, mm. you know where F6 is, but you don't know where is Islamabad. It's kind of like this. Okay. My city, <laughs> all these famous spots, Bodrum, Marmaris, Dead Sea, Fethiye, all are in my province. Mm. But nobody knows the name of the province, uh -huh, but everybody knows these small places. Yeah, of course. So I have the scarf of my city. Mm -hmm. There's name uh, on, on it, mm -hmm. there's the city name on it. Yeah. I visited each place to bring my city's name to that places. Okay. <laughs> and last week, a local newspaper in my city did interview with me about about that. They told mm -hmm. me that uh, he's bringing his love to everywhere. This kind of things. <laughs> yeah, this is my lifelong homework. Okay. Wherever I go, I will bring my city's name with the scarf. Just make I'm it famous. All yeah, over yeah, the yeah. World. just make it famous. <laughs> and also. Um, the thing is, this is a touristic city. Yeah, My exactly. city is a very touristic yeah. city. But yeah, so you were telling me that you have a favorite restaurant somewhere here. Yeah, that you wanted it, to visit. it is so very near here. It's uh, Jesse's. Okay. Let's go there. Yeah, let's go, let's go have some dinner. Yeah. Time to take a short break. See you in a bit. Welcome back. We're here at Jesse's with Turkish journalist Behlo Çetinkayan. Yeah, let's check out the menu. So what's good here? Yeah, generally, I, when I come here, I eat huge burgers. Yeah? Big, yeah, <laughs> big ones. Okay, yeah. wow. Maybe we can have something smaller or we can share something like uh, sliders. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's, let's get the waiter. Hi. So, can we have the sliders, please? And we'll have one chicken and one beef. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, um, you mentioned that you're not a huge fan of Pakistani food, is that right? Yeah, actually, I really tasted great Pakistani food too. Yeah? Just the thing is, 
I never find it myself. Okay. Always <laughs> someone shows me. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever I want to try, I always make wrong choices. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the spice, the chili. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, all the mm, like. I can say karahi or uh, dalchana. Mm. Uh, these are the great food that I really like to taste. Okay. Uh, I can eat them like all the day. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, just I don't know which place is good, which place isn't. They some places put so much chili, some places don't. Yeah. So I don't know the, <laughs> where them. Always my friends shows me the places and I go there. Yeah. I mean that's one of the things. Like you, you have so many things in common between Turkey and Pakistan, but food is actually not one of them. No, right? no, exactly, <laughs> complete opposite. Yeah. Firstly, we have, of course, we have the meat or uh, like similar food as like dalchana, similar taste. Yeah. But it's a soup. Not a food. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a, we call it lentil soup. Right. The same yeah. lentil, but we mash it. Okay. So very it becomes a soup. Yeah. So it's same taste, but the soup. Uh, but the other foods, we don't put that much spice, that much Ooh, chili. Exactly. Uh, also, like uh, these like grilled food in Pakistan yeah. aren't very popular. Also, there are too much chicken. There are chicken in everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer more like meat, fish. Of course, some foods with the chicken, but yeah, we yeah. prefer more meat. Hmm. Well, that's really nice. And I think like one of the Turkish dis dishes that's become really famous all over the world, especially in the West, is the döner kebab. Yes. What, what's the story? <laughs> I mean, it's actually not Turkish, or it was invented in Germany, or no. What, what's the deal? Opposite. Oh, Other okay. One. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. In uh, after the Second World War, mm -hmm. uh, especially Germany, but most of the Western European countries need uh, labor, labor power. Yeah. So they ask for the guest laborers from the Eastern European countries, yeah. like Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, uh, then Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. So all the people in that countries applied for the job in Germany and other Western European countries. Yeah. They went there, but they were guests, guest mm. workers. <laughs> After that, the guest workers realized they will never go back home. Mm. They will remain in that countries. Then they started to bring their families from Turkey to there. Okay. Because only the men were there, they were working, they were sending the money to home. Now they said, okay, we are not going back, bring the family. In the same years, a coup happened in Turkey, mm -hmm. military coup, and uh, there was a political uh, fights, I can say. The left side people were ki were killing the rights, mm. right wings were killing the lefts, communists were killing the nationalists. This kind of yeah. uh, atrocities were happening. So they said, okay, the Germany is safe. Bring the families. Mm. When you bring the, your family there, you will you start like needing the like the clothes suitable for your culture, the furniture that you use in your country, exactly. the food that you eat in your country. Yeah. Then they start opening the restaurants. And the döner kebab is one of the easiest ones. Okay. Because <laughs> basically it's a stick, you put the meat in the stick, yeah. and you just turn it, that's all. Exactly. And you cut it very thin slices, Yeah. it's a sandwich. Yeah, it's perfect. But the other thing is, German people were eating somewhere something else. Mm. Then they have to make it suitable for the Germans too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they start adding different things. Yeah, okay. So in Turkey, döner kebab is real meat, mm -hmm. but in Germany it's mince. Okay. And in uh, Turkey, we put very less things in döner kebab, like only maybe le lettuce or like cabbages or tomatoes. But in Germany, they add lots of sauce. Lots of right. different uh, like vegetables inside. That's why it's different. It's mm. called German dinner, but it's good. Yeah, I can say it's sometimes better than Turkish dinner. Yeah, <laughs> but it's originally Turkish. Okay, don't make it wrong. All right, <laughs> glad we got that sorted. <laughs> but I think that's one of the things that hasn't really taken off here in Pakistan yet. I mean, you can't yeah. get it here. Yeah, actually, before I come here, people say there were Turkish restaurant. Oh yeah, it is. They were serving dinner, mm. uh, but after a while they just sold the restaurant to yeah. someone else. Like, I think Pakistanis bought the restaurant yeah, yeah. and they changed the concept. Okay. It's not Turkish restaurant probably mm. anymore. But they're in 
like yeah. Lahore and Karachi, there are Turkish restaurants because okay. they are bigger cities. Yeah. There are exactly. more Turks and more foreigners mm. living in there, so they go to these Turkish restaurants. Mm. And uh, sometimes they come here for like special events organized by the embassy. Yeah. The Turkish restaurants come here. Okay. They cook some Turkish food. They serve Turkish food. Greatest time in the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them is next month, Republic Day, 29th. Uh, of the October, yeah. So there will be probably or inshallah Turkish inshallah. food. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what I wanted to ask you. Like, what what do you miss the most about Turkey when you're here? Yeah, food. Food, <laughs> food is the. That's why whenever I go to Turkey, uh, as I told, my city is southwestern city. It's a Mediterranean city, yeah. and we mostly eat vegetables. Mm. So we prepare vegetables for the winter in summer. Oh. So in a jar. You boil the vegetable in a okay. jar with, for example, if you're making beans, you cook the beans with um, like tomatoes, onion, uh, tomato mash. Mm -hmm. You put them all together, cook them, and put in a jar, and you boil the food in the jar. Okay. So it's wow. a kind of canned food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bring all this canned food when I come back yeah. from Turkey. So I have like uh, canned foods in my home. I cook them. It's kind of like home like feelings yeah and That's the crazy. yeah and the other thing i try to cook myself yeah uh, but it's like the vegetables have different taste here I'm it's sure, the same yeah. tomato but the taste is different yeah yeah and the other thing is the other thing i miss is like um, the nature the geography mm, it's the same yeah, forest it's yeah it's yeah. the same forest same tree same mountains mm. Yeah, the food's ah, here. There we go. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but the feeling is different. I miss yeah. much more that feeling. Yeah. Then the family, I just engaged last month. Mm. So I, I miss my fiance. Yeah, of and course. And my family. Yeah. And my hometown, of course. Mm. The going out, walking in the streets, even doing nothing, just walking the streets. Yeah. It all has complete different feeling. Of but course. The, yeah, it is uh, wherever you go, you never find this feeling. Absolutely. Your home is only, at only home. one. Yeah, that's very true. So this is your favorite food here yeah, in Pakistan. Yeah, favorite, favorite the, yeah, not the Pakistani food as a Pakistani mm -hmm. food, but the favorite restaurant in Islamabad. Mm. Well, what do you think about the um, the restaurant scene in Islamabad? Otherwise, like, yeah, do you find is, a lot of good places to go to? Yeah, the, like for Pakistan food. I don't expect somewhere like this. Mm. I generally go like street food places yeah. or places that you can just walk in, eat, like long tables, everybody yeah. sitting together. Exactly. Or And especially, I think it's a KPK food, okay. uh, Namkin Gosh. All right, <laughs> that's your favorite. Yeah. And that's yeah, like great. the Pashtun food is not yeah. so spicy. So yeah, I'm it's sure. very Turkish. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Less spicy, wow. too much meat, less <laughs> Turkish. Mm, excellent. But yeah, I mean, what I personally like about Islamabad is that you can practically find any type of food. Maybe not Turkish so much. Yeah, <laughs> but you can cook. Mm, <laughs> you can you find can uh, yeah ingredients and cook home. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, it's it needs effort yeah. to make Turkish food. I'm sure. So, yeah. yeah. So that's why we don't expect, of course, to find this everywhere. Yeah. But. Uh, Generally, in I can say every country, mm. there is one Turkish restaurant. Mm. I don't even know how they found that place because even in very small town of Bangladesh, mm. very small place of Niger, I seen Turkish restaurants. Wow. Turkish people there cooking for <laughs> others. I don't know how did they heard that place have no Turkish restaurant. Why they must business in there i have no That's idea so strange. you can find it anywhere but islamabad probably the only con uh, capital <laughs> without Turkish without, restaurant. yeah yeah that's funny um and i also like i don't know you might have a better idea but i don't see that many turks working and living here in islamabad i don't know i mean yeah it are is, there many yeah we have um turkish meeting kind of every week, mm. Friday nights, okay. in a football field, ah. <laughs> yeah. well. and generally we struggle to find 14 people. Uh, yeah, so generally we're stuck many. in 12, 13, then we call someone like Pakistani or Arab yeah. or other nationalities. Okay. But generally we struggle to find people. But probably 
in Islamabad there are like 30, 40 people. Mm. I can say 30, 40 men. Mm. Some of them here with their wives. Okay. Some of them not. So we are generally, I think we can, we are here like 50, 60 people in so Islamabad. Then, yeah. mm. In Lahore there are many, but mm. they are living far to each other. Okay. But Islamabad is a small city. We can see each other quite often. Yeah. yeah. I my uh, neighbor. He works in the Turkish Red Crescent. Okay. Ibrahim Carlos. Oh, yes. You might know him. <laughs> and he has a, he has a, a another Turkish colleague living with him. Mm. Very close. We, we live very close yeah, to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. But I said every week for a football match we struggle to find the yeah. <laughs> people like wow. working people. But yeah, no, that's great. And. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of Pakistanis do actually travel to Turkey. Yes, like, yes. I don't know, for work or what, what is the main reason? Whoever I speak, they always told me, like, I was in Turkey in that time. My cousin works in Turkey. This kind mm -hmm. of stories. Yeah. I think the one of the most important thing in this is they really like to visit Turkey. Yeah. The second thing is Turkey is an easy country to live. Because uh, you might know that in the European countries, there are like Islamophobia, racism, yeah. so it's against every like people who they don't look like them. Exactly, yeah. So Pakistani people, Turkish people, Arabs, like even Greeks, mm. even like uh, Armenians, uh, Georgians, whenever they go there, people know that they are not from that country, mm. so they start to see the experience, the racism or Islam yeah. Islamophobia. So, in Istanbul, in Turkey, for, for a Pakistani, it's a very easy country to live. It's Absolutely. kind of like a Pakistan. Yeah. Because you never receive that kind of uh, attitude towards you. Like, That's no true. racism, no Islamophobia. We are all Muslims in Turkey, so yeah. there is no Islamophobia. Exactly. But also, the, the as a like um, multicultural city, mm. we don't think or we don't question that. Who is this people? Yeah. What is his background? We don't think about this. Hmm. That's why they really like to work in Turkey, live in Turkey. Yeah. Also, the historical bonds, the Turkish history, Turkish dramas. Yeah. Yeah. Also, my name, you know, Behlul, it's very famous in Turkey. Oh, is it? What does it mean? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. In Pakistan, it's very famous mm. because there is a Turkish drama. Yeah. It's called Aşkı Memnu. Uh -huh, it's forbidden yeah. law. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the main character in that drama is Behlul. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Wow, and, uh, so that's how everybody yeah. knows. When okay. I was in England, people were calling me Ben. Because Behlul is very difficult for English people. Right, yeah. They, they weren't able to say my name. So yeah. just one of them gave me this name, Ben. Ben is very easy in England. <laughs> Benjamin. So wow. I was just telling my name is Ben. I was never telling my real name. <laughs> Thinking the same, when I was coming here, I will tell my name Ben because it will be probably difficult for Pakistanis. <laughs> when I came here, passport police said, Oh, Behlul, you know, Ashk oh, Memnu. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. so funny. Suddenly I learned Ashk Memnu is very famous here. It ended Amazing. 10 years ago in Turkey, yeah. but it's still on TV. Like yeah. 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 And wow. people watch Turkish dramas a lot. Yeah. They see like scenes from Turkey, Istanbul, exactly. the Bosphorus. Yeah. Then they say, okay, let's visit this place. Yeah, they want to go. They, when they come, they don't find that places because it was 10 years ago. Yeah. It all changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Have you gotten to watch any Pakistani dramas then? No, I just uh, watched little the Donkey King. Okay. It was very famous. <laughs> it's sometime. Not all, just, okay. just a little. I haven't seen yeah, that I one. try to actually watch. Um, Pakistani music videos. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, because I find them interesting. Mm. Last year, summer, I think, um, during the Cricket World Cup, mm -hmm. there was a famous song. I don't remember the name actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say able to say the, the name. But I yeah really try to watch the music videos. Yeah. But not the movies or dramas. I don't usually watch dramas mm. often, yeah. in Turkish or in other languages as yeah. well. <laughs> Just sometimes Netflix, but not yeah. all the time. Oh, well, that's still yeah. interesting. And um, how long do you think you're still going to stay in Pakistan? Like, how long is your contract yeah, for? Yeah, my posting here is like for two years. Okay. We can say minimum two years. Mm. But it might change soon, maybe next year in this time. 
I might be in Turkey or somewhere yeah. else. So that's yeah. back to Turkey next Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Or somewhere else. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. another country. Who knows, yeah? Yeah, who knows. <laughs> we just expect to hear something. Yeah. Because uh, we don't do like long time plans. Yeah. It might change anytime. Yeah. yeah. That's how it is. Okay, so then it's time for our rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Shalwar kameez or suit? Suit. <laughs> okay. Lahore or Karachi? I never seen Karachi. Lahore. <laughs> okay. That's an easy one then. Yeah. Uh, Blue mosque or Badshahi mosque? Blue mosque. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Hunza or Gilgit? Hunza. Cricket or football? Football. Yes. <laughs> Uh, baklava or barfi? This is a weird question. It <laughs> Don't is. ask this question to Turkish people. <laughs> okay. Baklava, of course. All right, all right. Um, Ankara or Islamabad? <laughs> then, yeah. Pass. Pass this question. Pass? Okay. <laughs> pass You're not card. allowed to pass. You can say both. <laughs> yeah, I can say both then. Okay. Yeah, good parts of both. All right, all right. Mountains or beach? Beach. As a Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. Are you a traveler or a bookworm? Traveler. Great. One word to describe Islamabad. Green. Great. <laughs> Topkapi Palace or Yildiz? Yeah, Topkapi reflects the, the most powerful era of Ottoman Empire and Yildiz reflects the most artistic side of Ottoman, but probably I'm saying top couple. Okay, fair enough. Um, Iskander kebab or biryani? Iskander kebab, okay. yes. <laughs> um, Pakistani or Turkish dramas? Yeah, I can say Turkish dramas. I don't watch all of them, but yeah, yeah there are some I watch. Yeah. Mira Great. Sultan, everybody knows. <laughs> Ask this to Pakistanis. <laughs> and the best thing about Pakistan? best thing about Pakistan is the green and the people because they're really friendly really hospitable I don't remember how many times I didn't pay taxi yeah because they whenever they learn that I'm Turkish they don't want for money for food as well mm. I can say the green side green uh, scene of the Pakistan and the people are the great excellent so then, it's time for you to sign our visitor's book. Let me just open it for you. Just a second, there we go. So just your name and your comments. Yeah. Okay, let's see what you wrote. So, thanks a lot for hosting me and giving me a chance to share my feelings about green and beautiful Pakistan. Pak Turki Dosti Pindabad, Pakistan Zindabad. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for today. Please join me again next week. Goodbye.